Risky business or safe haven? Well, recently emerging markets have been considered a safe haven by global investors during the financial mini crisis in 2006 and the subprime crisis starting in August last year. And has pointed out the resilience of emerging markets against the backdrop of a deteriorating global economic and financial environment. But is that the sentiment at the moment? Well, let's find out and we're chatting to Michael Creighton, head of Sachi South Africa. Michael, thank you so much for your time this evening. Well, <laughs> as we said, recently safe haven people wanted to diversify, lots of interest growing in emerging market assets. Has that tide turned? We've seen the JSE down 7% today. It definitely has turned. Um, generally, and it started before the, the, the crisis of the, of the last, last two weeks. Um, with, with high inflation throughout most of the emerging markets, resulting in higher interest rates, and a, a tendency for slower growth. Yeah. So definitely there is much higher risk with emerging markets and the international mar world is, has seen that. Let's look then at your recent report um, out looking at some of these, um, I suppose, the more prominent emerging markets. What mm -hmm. kind of similarities did you see when looking at the different key areas that you were researching? Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that comes through is that all emerging markets are experiencing difficulties in some areas. So we are colleagues with our, with our peers and, and they, they all have, have risks, although the extent of the risks and, and, the, the different, and there are different risks between the various yeah. countries. But we, we, we looked at things like the political risk, the economic risk, the financial risk, the risk of insolvencies, um, and, and throughout all of those risks there were similarities, but there were certain areas where some countries came through as, yeah. as a worse area than, than others. Let's touch then firstly on political risk, which you mentioned. Um, recently there's been some jitters about whether or not the South African political climate may be changing or not. Lots of that concern coming domestically. Is that how global investors are viewing us? The, South Africa, when, when we did the research, which started a, a couple of months back, yeah. South Africa scored very well on the political risk side of things. Um, and it was certainly one of the areas, and out of the ten, we were one of the best from a political yeah. risk stability point of view. Our position hasn't changed um, given the, the, the recent political changes in South Africa. And the main purpose behind not changing our, our stance is that, you know, the, it's been a lot of power play within the, in the, within the ruling party. Yeah. But as we currently stand, we still have the same ruling party. Um, we, we understand that, that, that internationally and, and in most countries there is power play for for, for various positions, positions. Yeah. and so that hasn't changed and as long as our, our policies particularly our economic policies continue to be how they have been in the past then we believe that from a political risk point of view um, we still are okay but certainly the recent developments have caused the international market to watch us and to and to monitor what is what is happening and and any changes will, will definitely put off into the international market. Okay. Let's look at macroeconomic conditions. Then how did yeah. South Africa fare, particularly with our um, you know export performance? Recently we saw trade deficit numbers coming in, not so bad, but that is a very volatile number. Mm -hmm. On the on the economic side of things, we still scored reasonably well, um, or probably sort of average compared to the the, the other markets. Um, the biggest concern was on the financial risk side of things, and, and that comes down to the current account deficit. Yeah. Of the markets, we, uh, if you measure current, uh, the current account deficit as a percentage of GDP, we were the highest of the ten markets that we, that we measured. And as a result of the current account deficit, we are very much reliant on, on capital flows into the, the country. And those capital flows come in from a combination of either in portfolio yeah. investments or foreign direct investment. In the case of South Africa, most of the capital flows are coming into the country as a result of portfolio investments. And that is extremely concerning at the moment, given the, the, the liquidity squeeze in, in the international market. Yeah. And it's our perception that that is one of the reasons why our stock exchange is, is, is struggling, is because portfolio investments can be quickly taken out of the, out of the economy. Um, and with the, the growing risks that are taking place in the, throughout the world, and particularly you know, the higher risk of emerging markets, foreign investments or investors are, 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 are tightening up on their portfolio investment, yeah. investments and are scrutinizing where they're investing um, more closely. Some of the other countries then within the research report themselves, are they seeing more FDI inflows rather than portfolio inflows? Yeah, the, the one other country that scored quite badly, like ourselves, was Turkey, but because they have quite a high current account deficit, yeah. but they are attracting more foreign direct investment and are slightly less reliant on on the investment portfolio um, inflows. 
Um, the one market that is really doing well from uh, attracting foreign direct investment that is also running a deficit is Brazil. Yeah. So certainly of most of the markets and of the 10 top emerging markets, we are probably one of the worst when it comes to attracting foreign direct investment. What about the ease of doing business by the private sector? This is something that African countries in general tend to, to score quite low on. How did South Africa fare compared to its peers here in the emerging market market? South Africa fared very well. I think we were the second easiest for, for foreign companies to come in, into South Africa and, and set up mm -hmm. business. And that's important. It's important to, to make sure it's fairly fairly simple and easy process. So in that area, we, we, we're doing well. And it is easy now for, for foreign companies to yeah. come in and do business in South Africa. But are we more or less resilient to global macroeconomic shocks? Because we're told now that um, the U.S. might be going into recession, that the global economy is going to slow down probably more, more significantly than it earlier been predicted. How do you expect mm -hmm. South Africa to fare? I think we're going to be in, a, in for a tough time. Um, as it is, we, we have some difficulties in our own, own economy from an energy perspective, from an inflation perspective. Yeah. But given the current international crisis, that is going to continue. Our de deficit is going to continue to be under pressure. Um, because of the slowdown internationally, there's going to be less demand for, for our, our exports. Although, obviously, the deterioration in the RAND will help a little bit. Yeah. But, but generally, if the demand's not there and everybody else is in a recession, they're not going to buy our, our product. And on top of that, uh, we, are, we have a lot of infrastructural developments planned for South Africa. Yeah. And a lot for us to be successful in that infrastructure structural development, we are, are reliant on, on the importation of, of skills and, and, and product. Yeah. And, and that's going to mean that it's going to be costly to, to import. Um, so we're going to continue to, to be under, un, under pressure. And yeah. the fact that we are relying on, on capital flows into the country at a period of, of time where those capital flows are not going to be there. They're yeah. going to be dried up. People are going to be very selective where they spend their money. Um, particularly from a, an investment, a foreign direct investment perspective. Yeah. Some of that will still continue. We don't believe it will stop. But people are going to scrutinize projects and risks more closely and be more selective as to where, where, where they invest. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Mark Creighton is the South African head of Asachi. Well, coming up after the break, your top stories of the day, a look at the new Africa Index, and Karina Kamal finds out about China's investment into Africa. Stay with us.